this tutorial we'll look at creating some simple items, managing stacks of items both on the ground and in inventories, and a simple inventory system. The full source code, associated files, and a written version of this lesson are all available on my website. First of all, we'll create a list of item types. I'm just making one as an example. We'll specify a name, the maximum number of the item that can fit in a stack, a sprite from our PNG file, and an offset for the sprite to be drawn relative to the top left of the tile on which the item is placed. We'll also create a stack class for managing stacks of items. The stack class simply stores the type ID of the item and the quantity of the item in the stack. We also need an inventory class. This will specify the number of item stacks it can fit, called spaces, and also have an array to store stack objects in this inventory. Our inventory class will have a method called addItems, which takes the item type ID and the quantity we want to try and add to the inventory. We'll loop through the spaces in this inventory. If we find an empty space, we'll create a new stack object for this item type and fit as many of the item as allowed into the stack before adding it to the inventory. Otherwise, if the space has a stack already that has the same item type as the one we're adding, we'll try and add to the stack here. If we've managed to fit all the items into new or existing inventory spaces, we'll return zero. Otherwise, we return the remaining quantity we couldn't fit into the inventory. We'll also create a placed item stack object that handles stacks of objects dropped on map tiles. This object will store the item ID, the stack quantity, and also the XY position of the stack. To this class we'll add a method called placeApt that can be given an XY position to place the stack on the map. We first check if the stack is already placed on a tile, in which case we remove the current tile's reference to this stack. We can then update the XY property of this stack and attach a reference from the map tile at the specified coordinates to the stack. Now, we'll add a property to our tile class that can store a reference to a placed item stack. To our character class we'll add an inventory property for which we'll initialize a new inventory object with three spaces. Our character class will have a new method, pickup, for attempting to pick up items from the floor and add them to the character's inventory. To begin, we check if the character is moving by testing if the tile from and tile to XY values are the same, and returning false if they are not. We then fetch a reference to the character's current tiles item stack property. If the value is not null, there is a stack here, so we add what we can to the character's inventory and store how many are left in the remains variable. If any items remain, we update the tile stack quantity to this value. Otherwise, 
we destroy the tiles item stack by setting the reference to null. In our Windows onload event handler, we're going to use a couple of loops to add some example item stacks to the map. Now, in our draw game methods nested drawing loops, after our code for drawing floor tiles, we're going to test if the Z level being drawn is 1. If so, we'll see if there's a placed item stack on the current tile, and if there is, we'll draw the item type sprite. We also want to show our player's current inventory. After our nested drawing loops, we'll loop through the player character's inventory spaces. For each space, we'll draw a rectangle towards the bottom left of the screen, and if the inventory contains an item stack at this position, we'll draw the item type sprite, as well as the quantity of the item in this stack if it's greater than 1. We'll now scroll back to our player input code and check if the P key, key code 80, is down. If so, we'll call the player character's pickup method. To support this input, we'll modify our Windows onload method to include key up and key down event handlers for this key code. Items are a key part of many games, and a simple and effective method to manage their placement and storage in inventories is an important thing to understand.